I'm Sheila Dix and I'm from Joy Haven Farm in Shorter, Alabama. Our farm is certified naturally grown, so we grow organically. It's 25 acres, but we grow on one acre intensively with two high tunnels that are 30 by 72. We started farming, and I that we have to use that word farming kind of loosely because when we first started, it was really just a small garden plot. I've always kind of had a green thumb and I love growing things. And when I was a youngster, we always had a big garden. So we were like the weeders and the eaters. So when we started our little garden, it was basically for our own health. We just were finding that, that we were having some kinds of stomach issues and stuff from things, especially eggs and greens in particular. So we just decided, just decided to start growing some stuff. And it was a complete flop. I mean, we lost almost everything to insects. I had no clue what I was doing, but it was fun. And the things that did make it just made me more want to grow it more. So I just started, it just started evolving. And we moved from the little small garden to some raised beds in a growing area. And then we started, I started getting better at growing things and starting to actually have lots of harvesting, lots of extra things. And so we would give those away to family and to um, neighbors. And I had a daughter who was in college at the time and she was a business major. And she would actually come home on the weekends and take orders from her friends <laughs> and then she would uh, take them back to, so they were kind of like our first uh, people that we ever sold to with some of my daughter's um, fellow students. And she just kept encouraging us. She's like, don't give away your organic vegetables. She said, we need to sell them. So then we started going to some local, a very small local farmer's market in Tallahassee. Then we moved to the, the curb market in Montgomery. We started a small CSA. That CSA helped us invest in some larger tools and equipment that was going to make our labor a lot less intense. And if you can save on labor, that's your saving money. That's your putting your money in your pocket. So we sell our vegetables exclusively to our CSA families. And these families are from Montgomery, Auburn, Tallahassee, and Shorter area. And we have a 100 family CSA. The pros, obviously, are that we pre-sell our vegetables and we have an estimate of what we need to grow and what we're going to grow. It's also, we feel like, a really good part of the community by reaching out to these families that are in different areas. The cons are is that it's very stressful to make sure that you have enough varieties for your CSA. And then if we have some type of loss, it's very stressful under those conditions because you can't really make up for that. You know, it's once the season starts, then you're, you're in it. We do um, reach out to other farmers in our area, local farmers. We offer vegetables that don't make sense for us to grow here, like sweet potatoes. So those things we reach out to other farmers and get. So by that way, we're supporting other farmers in our area. We get our production su supplies from several different areas. We get our fertiliz fertilizers from Seven Springs. We get all of our organic seeds from Johnny's and Southern Exposure and High Mowing. We also get a lot of our bags and stuff we're buying from Glacier or Amazon. We get our compost from, when we order seed starting mix, we get it from Vermont compost and have it shipped here. Unfortunately, we don't have a good source for compost in our area at the time. There is a new one that's opened up recently near Auburn that's called Soil 3, and we got some of their compost this last year. We get our seed starting mix from Vermont compost. We get a lot of our, like for seed trays and stuff, we get those from Bootstrap or Neversink. We do the wind strips. We're in high tunnel number two, which was our original high tunnel. And during the spring and summer, you can see we put our tomatoes in. We have interplanted lettuce. We have spinach this year. What we do with our tomatoes, how we plant them in the spacing, we have to buy nematode um, resistant varieties because we have nematodes in both of our high tunnels. Um, this is something that we've also used beneficial nematodes. These were all advice that I've been working with Dr. A. But we um, put all of our tomatoes on typically a 40 inch bed and they are two feet apart, two on each row. So basically they're one inch, they're one foot apart, but they're staggered two. And then we'll string them all up. These are all determin um, interdeterminate tomatoes um, that we will string up to one lead. 
The irrigation that we use in this high tunnel and pretty much in all of our areas, it's a two inch main line and then we have a shutoff on each um, row of drip tape. We do have overhead irrigation in this in both of our high tunnels and we use that for cooling down the high tunnels whenever, for instance, when it's on a hot day and we have something like spinach in here, we can cool it down by running it about 10 minutes and it'll cool it down for about, about 10 degrees. And then we also will do a little bit of irrigating in order to cool off the soil. This is the original high tunnel that Dr. A put the netting in and the high tunnel was being used. I think I want to say it had one planting on it before we got the netting up. Slowly but surely by the next year we had almost no cutworms. By the following year we had no cutworms and we had no hornworms on any of our tomatoes. It was just a huge benefit and of course caterpillars. Right now we're in what we call high tunnel number one. We have Hakura turnips waldrum lettuce and this is salanova we have a row of tomatoes and then we have an asian green it's tot soy asian green we plant it intensively because we harvest baby and we bag it this will be our first lettuce for our first csa the hakira turnips will we'll probably get two weeks out of the hakira turnips and then of course the salanova after this Salanova comes out of here because we won't be able to do lettuce in here during the summer. Then peppers will go in this high tunnel. Here is one of our additional growing areas that is on the side of the high tunnel. You get a lot of um, water off the high tunnel. So we have done a nice long drainage ditch with our BCS. It has an attachment where we can do ditches and also form our beds. So we did raised beds out here. We did landscape fabric because of the weeds situation. And we've had a lot of heavy rain over the past two storms and heavy rain. So some of this stuff is looking a little bit like it's been frazzled. But this is some cabbage that we grow for our CSA. We don't have, I don't have drip irrigation out here yet. So we did this micro sprinkling system and it's really nice because it's easy to move. You can put it anywhere you need to. We've used them, we use them all over the farm. We especially use them like if we direct seed something that needs to have water on it and we have to keep the top wet like carrots or something like that. And this row right here is a beneficial insect row that we grow out here in this area to draw in lacewings or ladybugs and this mix is from Johnny's. We're in a new section. We expanded a little bit. We're using landscape fabric in this particular area because it's new and it, we still have a good bit of heavy weeds in this area. One of the first things we started growing was cilantro and dill. We exclusively do them in our um, paper pots now. And if you notice, we had a lot of this really, really heavy rain would have really washed out any direct seeding that we would have done on here. And you can kind of see that we still have, the it has washed it, but the paper pots are still in place and the plants are doing well. And this is one of the crops that we can start growing them in the paper pots and give ourselves a little bit more time to go ahead and plant them. And because we live in Alabama, we have to successionally plant these particular um, crops because they bolt very fast. They, they really like the cool weather. What we're in front of right now is our hardening off area. Once everything has got its true leaf on it or has at least germinated in the, in the temperature it needs to germinate in, then we move them over here. Um, many times we'll have them inside of this little hoop. We can put stuff in there and protect it. Like during the storms and stuff, we put everything inside. And then we gradually move everything out here to start acclimating it to the actual temperature that it's gonna, and the environment that it's gonna be in. This year, we've got our um, paper pot. We've done bunching onions up here, fennel. This will be our green beans, which we've started doing a landscape fabric. We did it one time and now I'm completely sold on it. We do all of our green beans, less weeding, and then also because we grow them so close together, we can just, it's easier to harvest them. And again, we've got this uh, overhead micro irrigation because at the time we didn't have this main lineup yet, so it was perfect for getting our seeds wet and get them started. We do leeks every spring and we usually don't, I, I swore I wasn't gonna do any more onions, but we went ahead and did a couple of rows of onions uh, because I love fresh onions and we want them for our CSA members. Um, the leeks do much better in our area. Um, they're neutral, so they do a lot better. We don't get any bolting with them. And everybody really likes them. Um, we went down, this is our direct sowing area. 
This is the area that we've had landscape fabric on before and it's not as, it, we don't have as much weed pressure. So we direct seeded lots of brassicas, um, radishes. We did some paper pot, Asian greens. This is an area where we just got the landscape fabric down on this part and then all the rest of that was either direct seeded or done with paper pot. Our wash and pack area. This particular area has evolved over the last eight and a half years. We weigh out all of our fertilizers and stuff, so we do all that right here, but we have our jank cedar here, and then also this is the Never Sink Tilter. So this is really great for just incorporating things about two inches, and it runs on a drill. It's super easy, anybody can use it. All of our employees use this. And the jank cedar game changer, this is our main cooler and it is a seven by seven. It accommodates most of our stuff because everything really gets moved out on a weekly basis. And then this cooler right here is on a regular air conditioner and we use this as our tomato cooler. So as we put, put um, our tomatoes, they go in there on shelves and it runs at about 60 degrees. And inside, um, this is our upgraded wash station. We now have all metal walls. We have a regular sink, which we probably will change this out to one more of these tubs. Because once we started working in this area, we realized that we really could use another tub, this 100 gallon tub, as opposed to this sink. So we'll probably be moving that out and putting one of these in. But we have two sinks. Um, my husband built me a spinner. 100 gallon tubs have bubbler inside of them. What it essentially does is when the water that goes in here, once it's filled and the vegetables are in there, we have these, this um, air that goes through these uh, pipes and it pushes the water up and makes bubbles and it actually agitates all the water and cleans the vegetables. Okay, so right now we're standing in front of my little greenhouse is what we call it. When we started, it was um, my area to start seedlings and we started tomatoes, eggplants, and mostly tomatoes for our for our own use. And so we realized it's really a nice little, awesome little place, but we have outgrown it very quickly. We have um, modified it over the years to make it kind of work better for doing lots of trays of seedlings, but this is where all the seedlings start. And then we move them over to that hardening off area that we mentioned earlier. We put in this uh, tray to load all of our trays with this is we just put it down in it and put the soil inside of them. We also use this to um, sift our soil mix if we're going to do paper pots because their their holes are so small. We don't want any big chunks of anything in there, so we go ahead and sift it through that right there. Right now, this is pretty empty, but in about a couple weeks ago, this was completely wall to wall with tomatoes and other things. So right now we have. Um, we just, we have some things that are on deck. We've got some more cilantro and dill that are in the paper pots. We've got basil that's waiting for it to warm up a little bit outside so we can plant it. Um, this basil is actually in uh, the wind strips that you can get from um, Never Sink Farm. And we really like um, these wind strips. They do a really great job. No, the roots um, harden off themselves. They don't um, form um, a ball at the bottom. So it's a lot healthier for the plants. So I would highly recommend investing in these um, wind strips. We just started getting them, I think at 10 at a time. And each year we just bought 10 more. Um, I had mentioned earlier about the trays that we use. These are the bootstrap trays. And um, you'll see that they're just a thicker, better quality of um, tray that will last you a lot longer. We we did buy a lot of cheaper ones and we used them over the years but they really would only last two year, two sessions at the most and then they started getting cracked and hard to pick up these are the 200s that we now put our, do our lettuce in we have um, heating pads which we use in the spring to put our trays on to get them to get a little better germination um, and we do use some lights sometimes this tray of um, squash was zucchini was kind of dragging along and it was really small so we went ahead and put it under the lights but most of the time we don't even have to have it. Um, this is, um, we do have a, 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 a hot water heater hooked up to this particular um, building in this faucet so we're able to, we want to put warm water on our sea trays as opposed to cold water so we can get them done. You know, germinate and stay 
most seeds will germinate at about 70 degrees. I know a germ chamber would probably be really the best um, way to do uh, germination, but we haven't done that yet. That's on my wish list. My advice for a beginning farmer is if you can, I would work for another farm for about a year or so because so many things we had a learning curve on and we kind of had to learn. Also, I would invest early on in whether you had to borrow the money or somehow get the money to buy some tools that make your labor so much easy. I wanted to add too is that I would definitely reach out to other farmers in your area. They're like the best resources for materials, for varieties that do well in your area. I would also reach out to any of the you know, free webinars or whatever's available. JM's book, The Market Gardener, was a book that laid on my desk and is open to one particular spot. It's, it still sits on my desk. I used that book from, I mean, for all of my spacing. I mean, I just learned so much from that particular book. So JM's uh, Market Gardener book is a really good place to get some information. But reach out to other farmers. They really are helpful um, most of the time. And when they have time, they're able to share those things that will help you. And also a shoulder to cry on because when you lose, lose your, <laughs> the same vegetables they do from a bug, some certain kind of bug, it, it's helpful to, to share that with someone else. Okay, one of the other resources that I wanted to mention, we started using Harvey. I think we're going into our second year now. It's a good platform for our CSA. And when we do want to sell online, we can use that particular platform to do that. Right now we just use it for our CSA, but if we wanted to switch to strictly online selling, then we could still use that platform. The extension um, resources have been very helpful with us over many years. We do, I do have the mobile app and I probably what it helps me most with is identifying insects and probably um, some kinds of disease on our crops. It's a quick thing I can look up when I'm out in the field. I do occasionally use the calculator um, for inputs. Um, if it's something as simple as nitrogen, I can look it up real quick because we have, we use feather mill and that's one of the things that's listed on there. The resource agents that have helped me and do continue to help us, um, Jamie Oates is one that they did probably one of the very first um, intensive um, soil testing at our farm, which really opened up my uh, mind to our soil health. And so from that point on, we just started really focusing on our soil health. We, um, with cover crops and all that. So Jamie is a great resource for that. Um, Dr. A, of course, is doing the screening and um, helps us with we, when we have any type of insect um, problems and um, we're quick to call them. Um, I believe, I'm not sure, we've had a field day out here too for irrigation and I think that was through the extension as well. Um, they've been very helpful and continue and I know that if I have a problem I can call them and they'll get back to me and, and I get pretty quick answers and if they don't know it then they can send me to someone else. Mm -hmm.